The Fitzroy readers, with their accompanying workbooks and software, unlock the important and magical door to understanding of and proficiency in written English. From the very simple first book, A Fat Cat, to the high level of The Facts of Life, the Fitzroy method builds logically and in easy steps. The method is readily understood by students and educators. Before attempting a higher level reader, children undertake engaging exercises which prepare them for anything new they will encounter. The process remains the same, whatever the level of book. This consistency gives confidence to students of all ability levels, even to those that have previously struggled. From their humble beginnings in 1976, the Fitzroy readers have constantly been classroom tested and improved. We're proud to present our enjoyable tried and true method. Today we will be looking at what phonics exactly is and how it works. Then we will see how the Fitzroy method teaches phonics. Thirdly, we will have a look at the system and structure of the Fitzroy readers. Following that, I'd like us to have a look at the psychology that has been built into the Fitzroy program. We will have a look at supplementary materials and of course speak of the Fitzroy guarantee of literacy excellence. So what is the underlying philosophy of the Fitzroy method of learning to read and write? Very simply, when we speak, we make sounds, speaking sounds. When we write, we write these sounds. English has an alphabet of 26 letters. We use these letters to write the sounds we speak. Learning to write means learning which letters to write for the sounds we speak. Sometimes we use one letter per sound, Sometimes we use two or more letters per sound. Learning to read means learning which sounds to speak for the letters we see. In English, we read a word from left to right, and we read a sentence from left to right. It is important to understand phonics because the Fitzroy method is a phonic method. We therefore must understand two things. Phonic systems use the alphabet. This is true not only of English. Any language that uses an alphabet is a phonic language. And most importantly, the alphabet is a sound code. We are used to many codes, such as color codes for traffic light signals. But the alphabet is a sound code. Each letter of the alphabet stands for a particular speech sound. Therefore, the Fitzroy method begins the program by teaching the sounds that the letters make. The images on the screen now are demonstrating that each letter is given a sound. Therefore, looking at the A sheet, we have iconic pictures, apple, arrow, ant and axe. Similarly with the P for pig, pencil, penguin, pineapple. So let us summarise written English. English uses an alphabet, A, B, C, D, etc. This alphabet has 26 letters. Each letter represents a speech sound, and a word is simply made up of letter sounds put together. It's important to note that we're talking about letter sounds, not names. If a dog happened to come into the room, we would never say, here is a D-O-G, we would say, here is a dog, D-O-G. Similarly, with cat, this animal is not a C-A-T, it is a cat, K-A-T, and a P-I-G is a pig, P-I-G. This means that having learnt only a few basic sounds that the letters make, we can already begin to form and read words. At this point, everything seems simple. The alphabet is made up of letters. Each letter stands for a speech sound. We put these sounds together to form words. Easy, 
but the question arises, are there only 26 speech sounds in English? Sadly, the answer is no. In English, we make about 44 speech sounds. So, of course, the question is, how can we show all 44 sounds in written English? The ingenious answer is the use of English digraphs. A digraph for us is two or more letters put together, but which represent a new sound different from the basic sounds of the component letters. For example, the digraph AR is not A, R, it is R. The digraph CH is not K, H, but CH. The digraph ALL is not A, L, U, but ALL. Footnote. We could say three letters was a trigraph, but for simplicity, the Fitzroy method refers to all larger combinations as digraphs. There are in fact about 60 common English digraphs, and we will speak about those a little later. The Fitzroy method also has single letter extra sounds, like the letter I when it is sounded as in kind. A phonic approach is an easy approach. Let us look at some larger words that sound out using the basic sounds of English. Goblins. G, O, B, U, I, N, Z. Wombat. W, O, M, B, A, T. And then there are complex words that use basic sounds plus the digraphs. Transport. T, R, A, N, S, P, or T, or Moonlight, M, U, N, L, I, T. The Fitzroy method teaches all common digraphs. The first digraph is officially taught in Reader 9. Digraphs are then introduced gradually until all the important ones have been covered. We will see exactly how this is done a little later on. Phonics is actually quite magical. If you look at the images here, you will see the digraph IR making the sound ER, as in bird. GU making the sound G, as in guest. TH making the sound TH, as in thing and A-Y making the sound A, as in day. What is being shown on the screen is actually the back of the reading book. We can see then the whole word birthday, made up of some single basic sounds, but also digraphs. And when we put the word together, we get b e r f d a birthday. When we use both basic sounds and digraphs, we are actually covering an enormous amount of English spelling. Other examples here shown are m, u, n, l, i, t, moonlight, l, e, p, ing, leaping, discussion, d, i, s, k, a, s, shun. In recent decades, there has been much discussion about whether English is a phonic language or not. Indeed, there has been much misunderstanding of English as a phonic language. Let's be sure that English is a phonic language. Have a look at the sample sentence. The cat was on the mat. Looking at those six words, we actually see that three of them are non-phonic. The, was and the and three of them are phonic. K, A, T, O, N, M, A, T. If we look at this sample of written English simplistically, we would indeed say that only 50% of English is phonic. It would therefore seem to be heavy going to teach English as a phonic language. But, Actually, about 95% of English is phonic. 
if we make one small adjustment. There are 50 common words that we teach as whole words. The word the appeared twice, and the word was. In any written text, you will find the definite article the appears regularly. Was is also a very common word. Therefore, the Fitzroy method teaches the 50 most common non-phonic or special words separately. 50 words are not too difficult to remember. The method that has had popularity in past decades is the whole language approach. This approach is taken by educators who believe that English is not a phonic language and therefore that each word must be taught separately. However, with hundreds of thousands of words of English, this would take a very long time. Now, if you take a phonic approach and you include the digraphs, we would sound out the top word chicken like this, ch, i, k, e, n, chicken. Now, of course, once you know chicken, chin is very simple indeed. All the information for chin is already contained in chicken, ch, i, n, chin. If you teach each word as a separate unit, as whole language does, it takes a very long time. Also, of course, it is teacher dependent. What word will a teacher choose to teach on a certain day? Knowledge, therefore, becomes limited to the words taught in the classroom. Also, there is memory confusion. For example, the word card. Is it spelt C-A-R-D? or C-R-A-D. In phonics, we would learn k r d In whole language, there are more spelling problems. Sometimes the children cannot remember whether you write the R or the A first. Whole language was tried all over the world, but literacy standards were not maintained. Phonics has regained popularity. The example on the screen now is purely showing that having tried whole language, in French called méthode globale, the French government decided that they would no longer support whole language programs in the schools and reverted to what they call méthode syllabique, which we call phonics. It is true to say that the Fitzroy readers reintroduced phonics into Australia on a large scale. The Fitzroy readers have been classroom tested since day one, which was in 1976. The Fitzroy readers were developed for Fitzroy Community School with no thought of sales at all. We were purely interested in successfully teaching children to read and write. The Fitzroy readers are now used in over 3,000 Australian schools and are used in several Asian countries for teaching English as a foreign language. The Fitzroy readers are a systematic approach to phonics. First, the basic letter sounds are taught. Then, digraphs are introduced. The formal rules of English are covered and irregular spellings of English are treated as special cases. We call them special words. They are indeed special cases of spelling and calling them special gives them a more positive association for the child. The system is a very easy one for educators to follow. Our master list in the teacher's guide shows when a sound is introduced and any special words that come into a reading book. So looking at book one, called A Fat Cat, the sound A is taught, and also the indefinite article A. We tend to say A at this early stage for the word A, so that children do not confuse A with the letter U, which sounds A. What is in the 1x to 10x series of readers? The same literacy skills as in readers 1 to 10. 
but with some longer words like tunnel and wombat. There are no surprises in the Fitzroy readers because the new sound and the new special words are on the back cover and can be prepared before the book is approached. The very beginning pages in each reader show what letters or what sounds we know or need to know to approach a reader and what words we have already learnt. The first five books of the Fitzroy Reading Program cover the basic short vowels. The short sounds of the vowels A as in cat, I as in pig, E as in hen, A as in umbrella, and O as in cot. The page being shown at the moment demonstrates how the text always supports the sound the child has been taught. For example, a fat cat and a rat sat on a mat. Notice the repetition of the a sound in the words fat, cat, rat, sat and mat and the indefinite article a as in a cat, a rat and also a mat. Similarly, where we are teaching that the letter i makes the sound i as in pig, the text supports the sound we are working on. The sound i in big, in pig, in bit and in fig. The text always supports what the child has learnt. In book three we introduce two special words. The definite article the and the word of. These are two of our common 50 special words. Also, we look at the letter U making the sound A, uh, as in bug. Notice again the text, H, A, G, hug, B, A, G, bug, etc. With many A uh, sounds. And also the two special words being taught at this level, the and of, appearing constantly. Book 4 emphasises the basic sound made by the letter O, O as in dot, and again the text being a repetition of the O sound, and we're also repeating for revision the special words that have been used in earlier books. Here on the screen we also see the word of which was taught as a special word in book 3. The fifth book covers the other short vowel, the letter E, making the sound E, as in hen. Two more words of our common 50 are taught, the words to and was. We're repeating for revision the word the, and our new special word to is appearing on this page. Was, the other new special word, appears regularly in the text of book 5. Notice that we have already read five books. In the Fitzroy method, we do not attempt, as some old-fashioned phonic methods do, to teach children all the possible ways of spelling every sound before we start to read. That is a lot of theory before we get into the rewarding practice of reading. By carefully limiting the vocabulary of the early readers, we can introduce all the important spellings in easy steps one story at a time. I will not talk in depth about the following slides, but do note the gentle progression. Also in this particular book, Book 6, two more of our common 50 words, I and have, are taught, and the letter X comes in for the first time in the word box, and again in the word box. At the end of each story, we have a page which shows words we've used. 
Notice that many of the words we've used are special words. In this way, we reinforce those that take more concentration. Again, notice the progression of the text. In Book 8, we have introduced the special words said, go and for. The X series have been created for review and consolidation. In 1X, there are no new reading principles, nothing different from what appeared in Book 1, just a new story. If we're reading Book 9, we have the digraph U. In the book 9X, we again have the digraph U. Therefore, we reinforce new sounds and special words, but do not yet teach new information. The X series were written a little bit later because teachers requested more material at the beginning levels to consolidate what the children had learnt. This slide shows you the back of Book 4X. You may remember that in the Book 4 we had the letter O, making the sound O, as in dot. Here again we have the letter O, making the sound O, as in dot. Any new information is also printed on the back. We are now alerting the children to the different way the letter A is often printed. 